The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous cheese food, Velveeta. Everybody goes for Velveeta's rich yet mild cheddar cheese flavor in snacks, in sandwiches, and in hot dishes. And Velveeta, you know, helps supply important food values from milk and is as digestible as milk itself. That's why smart homemakers keep Velveeta on hand regularly to spread or slice and to melt for grand economical hot dishes. Tomorrow... Get Velveeta, the cheese food of craft quality. Well, there's an undercurrent of excitement around the breakfast table at the great Gildersleeve's house this morning. For several weeks, the house next door has been vacant. But this morning, a moving van pulled up and started unloading. Oh, boy! Leroy, sit down and eat your breakfast. Yes, Leroy, it's corny to stare out the window. Just like a gossipy old hen peeking out through the curtains. Gosh, out the side of the moving van says Sioux Center. Must have come from way out west. Yes, sir. Sioux Center. I want to see what they're unloading. They're not going to unload any Indians, Leroy. What an impossible little brother. How can you be so nosy, Leroy? Now they're taking out a phonograph. Oh, they are? Oh, I'd like to see that. Marjorie, not you, too. It's a phonograph, all right. I wonder if they have any new records. Uh, uh. More coffee, Miss Gill, please? Yeah, thank you, Bertie. Well, I guess I may as well let the children watch them unload. <laughs> yes, sir. You know how curious children are. And now they're unloading the washing machine. They are? Oh, let me see that. Oh. What a family. Hey, ain't that a Lulu? It's gorgeous, isn't it? Looks like an all-automatic. That's what every house needs, Mr. Gillsleeve, an all-automatic. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, they haven't got the thing yet. What's that? That's a high boy. Hi. <laughs> Junior comic. Can't understand why people are so nosy. By George, I'm going to finish my breakfast. Oh, look what they're unloading now, a pool. Table. <coughs> pool table? Let me see that. Make <laughs> room at the window for Mr. Gill, please. <laughs> Bertie, I'll come to the window, but I won't look. I'm not that curious. Oh, that must be the man who rented the house. Just drove up. Yep, that's the guy. South Dakota license plate. Where are you going, Unky? Well, if we're going to have a new neighbor, my dear, the proper thing to do is go over and get acquainted. Okay, I'll go on. No, you won't. I'll go over myself. It's not that I'm curious. It's simply the polite thing to do. Wait, Unky. Huh? What's the matter? You still have your toast in your hand. Toast? Oh, well, I'll take it along. Can't tell on the way over I might meet a bird. <laughs> yeah, this toast is burned around the edges. Here, bird. Yeah. Not bad-looking furniture on that truck. Hmm. Grand piano, too. Must have money. Vacuum cleaner looks old-fashioned now. Bag needs emptying. <laughs> Say, rubber-tired lawnmower. Plastic hose. You can see they live well. Guess the fella must be in the house. Door's ajar, but I'd better ring the bell. <laughs> Doesn't ring. Guess the electricity isn't turned on. I'll just stick my head in the door and say hello. Hello. Oop. Hello. <laughs> you the gas man? Uh, me? No, I'm your next door neighbor, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Thought I'd come over and say hello. Well, good. Glad to see you. I'm Oliver T. P. Pearson. Yeah, uh, glad to meet you, Mr. Pearson. Did you say it was Oliver T. P.? Yes, T. P. I'm in the clothing business. Oliver Two Pants Pearson. <laughs> Well, uh, glad you're going to be with us, Mr. Pearson. Uh, come all the way from Sioux Center, did you? Yes, sir. Going into business. Understand you're a prominent man here, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I'm in water. Uh, that is, I'm city water commissioner. <laughs> oh, I know that. You do? Yes, 
Sir, before I took this house, I checked into the neighborhood. Who? When I found out the water commissioner was going to be my neighbor, I said right then and there, this is the place for me. Really? <laughs> Welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned the gas man. Have you had your water turned on? I can take care of that for you. That's very kind of you, Gildersleeve, but I sent in the order yesterday. Well, I'll check on it when I get to my office. We want to be sure. It takes a heap of water to make a house a home. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, Gildersleeve. Well, uh, uh, family man, are you, Mr. Pearson? Oh, sure, but the family's still up in Sioux Center. I came on ahead to get things straightened out. Well, if there's anything we can do for you, don't you hesitate to call on us. Anything at all. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. That's nice of you, but I don't believe in imposing on my neighbor. Well, a good neighbor doesn't mind. Feel free to come over at any time. Well, thanks again. You're a real friend. Goodbye. Goodbye, Gildersleeve. Uh, fine fellow, Pearson. Salt of the earth. Yes. Hey, look. It what? Oh, Leroy in the hedge. Any kids in the family, Uncle? They boys or girls? Any my age? Where'd you find out, Uncle? Shh, keep your voice down, Leroy. We have fine, intelligent people next door. Go wash your face and put on a clean shirt. And stay out of Mr. Pearson's hedge. <laughs> Bessie, come into my office. Bessie? Bessie, do you know if Mr. Oliver Pearson's water has been turned on? Mr. Oliver Pearson? Yes, I just talked to him. Doesn't he know? You... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Bessie, he's just moved to town. Oh, yes, sir. Bessie Pearson. That would be under the P. It was when I went to school. Oh, here it is. Oliver Pearson. Well, good for you, Bessie. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, it's a good thing we looked up his card. Why, Bessie? Because he didn't pay his water bill last month. Uh, Bessie, Mr. Pearson wasn't in town last month. Oh, well, that explains why he didn't pay it. <laughs> you tell Charlie Anderson to drop whatever he's doing, Bessie, and turn on their water immediately. Yes, sir. Oh, that girl. Good morning, water department. What? Oh, hello, Judge. Good morning, Judge Hooker. Morning, Gildy. Morning, Bessie. And it is a good morning. Oh, brother. Commissioner, I dropped in to see if you'd like to go nutting this afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> nutting? No use letting the other squirrels get them. <laughs> Not today, Judge. I'm getting my new neighbor set up. New neighbor? Yeah, Two Pants Pearson. Just moved in next door to me. And believe me, Summerfield is lucky to get a citizen like him. I'd like to have you come out and meet him, Judge. Oh? Oh, yes. A high-type, intelligent fellow. Has a grand piano. You don't say. Mm -hmm. Come on, Judge. Uh, Bessie, we're going out to see how Mr. Pearson is getting along. Well, if we can't go nothing, we might as well go see the new neighbor. Hi, neighbor. Hi, neighbor. What do you know? <laughs> An amusing old goat. Yes, sir, Judge. The fellow Pearson is a charming fellow. We might do well to invite him to join the Jolly Boys Club. Can he sing? Of course he can sing. He's a regular fellow. Look. There he is, waving at me from the upstairs window. He isn't waving at you, Gilder. He's just cleaning the window. Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, he's busy now. We'll go over a little later, huh? Come on in the house, Jack. Thank you, Gilder. Back in the show, please? Yes, Bertie. Hello, Bertie. Well, good morning, Judge Hooker. We just stopped in for a minute, Bertie. We're going to call on our new neighbor, Mr. Pearson. Yes, sir. He was just over here to call on you, Miss Gilsey. Oh? Bought three light bulbs. He did? Well, I told him to come over for anything he wanted. Well, that's what he wanted. We didn't have any spare bulbs, but I dug them up for him. Well, good for you, Bertie. One out of the service porch, one out of the hall, and one out of your reading lamp. <laughs> My uh, reading lamp? That's all right, Gildy. If you want to read, you can go over to his house. <laughs> now, Judge, I'm glad he feels free to come over here when he needs something. I'll get it! Never mind, Bertie. I'm right here. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, Mr. Pearson, come right in. I'd like to have you meet a very good friend of mine, uh, Judge Horace Hooker. Judge Hooker? Well, how do you do, sir? This is indeed a pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure to know you, Mr. Pearson. 
I don't want to be a bother, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I wonder if I can use your telephone. Oh, no bother at all. Not at all. Go right ahead. It's right there in the hall. Well, thanks very much. The Summerfield directory is right there with the telephone. Oh, I won't need it. I'm calling long distance. Who? <laughs> well, help yourself. <laughs> My, long distance. <laughs> he did say long distance, didn't he? Operator, I'd like to talk to Mrs. Oliver Pearson, Sioux Center, South Dakota. South Dakota? That's a long ways away. Yeah. I'm calling my wife from South Dakota, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, good. You see, Judge, I told you you could sing. Hello? Hello, is that you, Flop? You must be a long ways away. I wanted you to know I made it all right. Yeah, the truck was fine. No problem. Gilder cheese. <laughs> All right, Judge. Tell me, Flop, how's your mother? He's been on the phone over six minutes, Gildy. That's quite a while on long distance. Mm-hmm. That's his business, Judge. It's his phone call. Yeah, but it's your phone bill. Mm-hmm. Well, Dandy, Flop! Now, Judge, Pearson can't pay me till he calls the operator back and finds out what the bill is. I'll hang up now. He's going to hang up. Nice to talk to you, Flop. I'll expect you next week. Goodbye, Flop. Goodbye. Seven minutes on the nose. <laughs> Please, Judge, he can afford it. Thanks a lot, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Well, I'd better get back. I... So soon, but... Uh... Oh, yes, I have more windows to clean. <laughs> well, Abyssinia. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, uh, Pearson, aren't you, uh, forgetting something? Forgetting something? Oh, yes, I beg your pardon. Sure. Goodbye, Judge Hooker. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Oh. Goodbye, Mr. Pearson. Gildy, do you mind if I use your phone? I want to call South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Give me that telephone. Operator? Operator? What were the charges on that call? How much? The great Gildersleeve will see Mr. Pearson about that in just a minute. If you're one of the mothers who are trying to solve the problem of what to put in Junior's lunchbox, here's an A-plus solution. Make his lunchbox sandwiches with Kraft's famous cheese food, Velveeta, often. That young man of yours will really go for Velveeta sandwiches. And Velveeta is rich in important food values from milk. For instance, it helps supply Junior with fine protein for strong muscles, minerals that help build sound teeth and bones, vitamins needed for normal growth. Yes, Velveeta helps supply many important food values from milk that youngsters should have. And Velveeta is as digestible as milk itself so the youngsters can have it as often as they want. And they'll want Velveeta sandwiches often because this cheese food is so good eating with a grand, rich-tasting, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor they especially like. So, Mom, spread or slice the golden Velveeta fix for those box lunches or for the quick meals you fix for the children at home. And remember, when you buy, it's smart to get that Velveeta in the two-pound loaf so you'll have plenty on hand for after-school snacks and hot main dishes, too. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta. It's the cheese food of craft quality. Well, when the great Gildersleeve found out he had a new neighbor, he immediately went over and extended the hand of hospitality. Now he suspects the hand was bitten. 
Anyway, he's on his way over to collect for a long-distance call. I don't mind him borrowing the light bulbs. They only cost a few pennies. It won't hurt to tactfully remind him that his call to South Dakota costs $7.80. Well, hello, neighbor. Hello. <laughs> come in, come in. We're seeing a lot of each other today, aren't we? Well, yeah. Yes, you might say we're beating a path to each other's door. <laughs> Hey, by the way, do you have any mouse traps over there? Uh, uh, mouse traps? Well, there may be a few in the garage you can borrow. Uh, <clears throat> must have been nice to talk to your wife way up in South Dakota. Say, that reminds me. Yeah? My wife likes the couch in front of the bay window. Oop. Uh, you grab that end, and I'll take this end, and we'll put it over there. Well, if that's the way she wants it. You'll have to lift up a little more. Pretty heavy. <laughs> Must be full of rocks. <sighs> Good work, Gildersleeve. Uh, did you uh, get this couch in Sioux Center? Oh, sure. <laughs> Long way to Sioux Center. <laughs> but on the other hand, it's as close as my telephone. <laughs> That's awfully kind of you, Gildersleeve. I'll probably take you up on it from time to time. Yes, but uh, I... am being quite sincere in saying this, Gildersleeve. I hope we'll be neighbors for a good many years. Just live here and grow old together. <laughs> He's giving me a head start. TV. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this afternoon? Uh, I think I need a long, tall Coke, PB. Very well. This little man has had a busy day. That's all? Yeah. I've got a new neighbor, PB. So I hear. The judge tells me you two hit it off right away. Well, he's hitting me off. I tell you, PB, a man makes a mistake trying to be too good a neighbor. Feel that you've been getting in his way, do you? Getting in his way. Peavy, what would you say to a man who called long distance on your telephone and then just walked out? I wouldn't say anything. What? Why should I? This is a pay phone. It... No, Peavy. <laughs> this was on my own telephone at home. He ran up a bill over $7 talking to his wife in South Dakota. Well, when a man's talking to his wife, you know how it is. No, I guess you wouldn't either. You just can't dent him, Peavy. I went over to remind him about the phone call, and first thing I knew, he had me moving his furniture. My, my. His name's Pearson. Two Pants Pearson. Hmm. Odd middle name, Pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the worst part of it is he's settling down next door to me. Plans to spend the rest of his life there. Well. Says he and I can grow old together. A fine prospect for the future. What would you do in a situation like this, Peavy? Well, I... No, I don't know why I'm asking you. I... You never had anybody come right in and take over. You never had anybody monopolize the conversation. Well, I... Never let you get a word in edgewise. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Well, I can't insult the fellow, Peavy. I don't know what to do with him. Well, it's hard to tell much about a man when you've only known him one day. He might surprise you. He surprised me already. One has to be careful about coming to hasty conclusions. Well, maybe you're right, Peavy. Pearson's pretty upset, moving and all. I suppose I should give him a fair chance. I would think so. I, George, I was hasty in judging Pearson. Could be a nice fella. Just snowed under with all that furniture. Moving and all. Got a lot of things on his mind. That's quite possible. Of course, you can't be sure. I realize that, Peavy. I got chummy with a neighbor once. Worked out all right, didn't it? Well, that's how I got Mrs. Peavy. (laughs) (laughs) What a day. Bertie! Yes, Mr. Kilt, please? I'm starved. What are you going to have for dinner? Well, we're going to have lamb chops. Good. With boiled potatoes, gravy, and Brussels sprouts. Mmm. Sounds wonderful, Bertie. Yes, sir. <laughs> Guess I'll go read the paper till it's ready. Hi, Al. Uh, hello, Leroy. Hey, Al. Hey, Bertie. 
Hey, was it okay to let your pal next door borrow the axe? Sure, good old Pearson. Is it okay if he broke the handle? Sure, get what? I forgot to tell you, Miss Gillsleeve, I let the man next door take the dishpan. The di- <laughs> All right, Bertie. That's his ring. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting pretty frisky. You want to turn out the lights and pretend we're not home, Unc? No, Leroy. I'll answer the door. Well, hi, neighbor. Uh, neighbor. Well, hello, Mr. Pearson. <laughs> what can we do for you this time? I wonder if I might borrow a couple of your pots. Pots? I'm going to do a little cooking, and I haven't had time to unpack the kitchen things. Oh, well, you go out and talk to Bertie. She's custodian of the pots and pans. <laughs> Thank you. I'll talk to good old Bertie. Who was at the door, Uncle Moore? Yeah, nobody for you, Marjorie. Mr. Pearson. Oh, is he over again? Yeah, this time he's borrowing pots and pans. Is he going to cook his own dinner? Why don't you invite him to have dinner with us? Well... Since his wife isn't here to do these things, I think it would be a very neighborly gesture. I don't know. I've become a little shy of these neighborly gestures. Uh, but I guess I should. Well, Bertie gave me everything I need. Uh, Mr. Pearson, why cart all our pans over to your house? Why not stay and have dinner with us? Oh, I wouldn't think of imposing on you folks. Well, we'd be glad to have you, Mr. Pearson. Thank you very much, but I don't want to be a nuisance. Oh, no. <laughs> Will you open the door for me, Gildersleeve? Yes, yeah, certainly. Thank you. Thanks for everything. That's yeah, all right. Uh, hope he remembers where he got those pots and pans. Now, Uncle, you told him to come over for anything he wanted. Yeah, I guess I did. Well, there he is again. So soon? Yes, Mr. Pearson. Hello again, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello. It was awfully silly of me to take those pots and pans. Huh? I got outside the door, then I remembered my gas hasn't been turned on. Oh, it hasn't? Well, in that case, you better have dinner with us. Oh, no, I wouldn't think of imposing. But I wonder if good old Bertie had let me use one of her back burners. Yes, but, uh, <laughs> you know the way to the kitchen. <laughs> Bertie, I certainly enjoy cooking. Yes, sir. You're going to be using that other burner very long. Well, I guess I can double up on things again. Oh, that's fine. Now, let me see. If I don't get the peas started, they won't be ready the same time the fried chicken is. No, sir. Now, where will I cook the peas? Any suggestions, Bertie? Okay, take the burner I'm on. I'll just dump everything together. Hmm, that's quite a... Dish you've concocted, Bertie. Yes, sir. I hope they think so. Got to take it in anyway. Sorry I'm so late, Mr. Gilsey. That's all right, Bertie. We realize you're not operating under ideal conditions. No, sir. Bertie's been cooking a long time, but this is the first time she's been shoved right off her own stove. <laughs> How are you and Mr. Pearson getting along? Care for some stew? <laughs> Stew? I thought we were having lamb chops. Yes, Bertie. Where are the lamb chops? In the stew. We're having lamb chop stew. Uh, what? What about the Brussels sprouts and potatoes? In the stew. Oh, my goodness. Couldn't help it, Mr. Gilsey. When he started taking over all the burners, I had to pour the little pots in the big pot. Well, this has gone far enough. Heads up! Coming through! Hot dishes! Hot dishes! Don't let me interrupt your serving, Bertie. I'll just squeeze around behind Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I'll pull up a little. I'll be back after dinner, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, I'm sure you will. I'll return these pots and pans. Don't bother. I'll send Bertie over for them tomorrow. Sometimes people have a way of forgetting to return these little things, Mr. Pearson. Well, whatever you say, Mr. Gildersleeve... Unky, I think you hurt his feelings. Well, look what he did to my dinner. <laughs> Stu. Uh, nine o'clock. I guess Pearson isn't going to return our pans. Well, you told him not to come back, Unky. No, I didn't. All I said... You practically invited him out of the house. 
Wouldn't surprise me if he never speaks to you again. Well, I didn't mean to offend him. Too bad, Unc. He's kind of a nice guy. Uh, what a day. Hmm. Guess I'll go up to bed. Good night, infants. Good night, Unky. So long, Unc. Leroy, you better be getting to bed, too. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I was too hard on Pearson. He was such a big nuisance. Still, he's a stranger in the town. Doesn't know anybody. We're the only ones he could come to. He's borrowed nearly everything we've got in the place. But he does it in such a nice way. You can't dislike him too much. Marjorie's right. I offended him. Poor old two pants. <laughs> uh, probably sitting over there in that cold, empty house wearing both pairs. <laughs> <laughs> Open the window and wind the clock. Uh, I'll set the alarm for 8 o'clock. Sleep as long as I can. Hello there, neighbor! Well, it's Pearson at his window. Hello, neighbor! Uh, what time are you setting the alarm for, Gildersleeve? Huh? 8 o'clock. I don't want to impose on you, but would you mind leaving your window open and setting your alarm a half hour earlier? <laughs> I'm an early bird! Oh, <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again very shortly. This week in Chicago, the 28th National 4-H Club Congress is in session. 1,500 boys and girls selected for their outstanding 4-H club work are gathering together to make new plans for the future and to take stock of past accomplishments. Accomplishments that have really been great. And in recognition of their splendid performance in the National Dairy Production Contest sponsored by the Kraft Foods Company, ten of these young people were guests of honor at a dinner last night attended by leaders of the dairy industry. Mr. J.L. Kraft, chairman of the board of the Kraft Foods Company, awarded six of these ambitious youngsters a college scholarship an opportunity for each one to build his knowledge and to contribute even more toward sound dairy development in America. This nation can be truly proud of the nearly 2 million 4-H club boys and girls and their leaders who are putting the words of their theme into action and devoting themselves to better living for a better world. Him again. Uh, hello, neighbor. Gildersleeve, I feel terrible. I walked out yesterday and forgot to pay you for that phone call to Sue Center. Well, those things happen. It was only $7.80. If you need change, I think I have it here. I can't thank you enough for all you've done, neighbor. Well, that's all right. Believe me, it isn't often a fellow can come into a town a complete stranger and be treated as royally as you've treated me. Well, thank you, old man. Don't think I'll ever forget it either. Oh, it was nothing. Well, I have to run along, Gildersleeve. Goodbye. Goodbye, neighbor. Uh, fine fellow, that Pearson. Yes, indeed. Wait a minute. What about that $7.80? <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White, with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, Dick Legrand, Gloria Holiday, and Herb Vigram. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Good night. Ladies, Pab Stet, the delicious cheddar cheese food is offering you a knife of a hundred uses, the Super Slicer. It pairs faster, slices cleaner, removes olives and cherries from bottles in a jiffy. It's the handiest kitchen knife in years. And you can get this knife for only 25 cents and the top label of a round package of delicious Pabstet cheese food or the red arrow from the top of a two-pound Pabstet loaf. Send your Pabstet label in your quarter tonight to Phoenix Pabstet, Box 5239, Chicago 77, Illinois. Please print your return address. Break the Bank Radio 